post. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for watching. I want to offer an especially warm welcome to those of you who are hunkered down under a thick blanket of snow. Don't worry, it's going to be okay. This is just God's way of trying to keep us safe from COVID by making it hard to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Just hang in there. This was Lake Michigan yesterday. Chicago, look at that. Wow, it's been fun, Chicago, but um, you're Canada now. I don't know how else to tell you. Maybe this is the storm Q promised us was coming. The only snowflakes we had here in LA this weekend were the ones blocking the vaccine line at Dodger Stadium. As if we didn't have enough problems trying to get these shots on Saturday, a group of anti, I don't know what, I don't know if they're anti-vaxxers or, or QAnon or Trumpers, maybe they just want to kill old people. I have no idea. Whatever their reason, they gathered at the entrance to Dodger Stadium for what they called a scamdemic protest march. They blocked traffic. They delayed the vaccinations for about an hour. Now, see, this is where we really miss Tommy Lasorda. He would have cleared that mess out in about a minute. And this was interesting. The organizers of the protests, if you want to call them that, told everyone not to wear Trump hats or shirts because they wanted to be taken seriously. <laughs> That's right. These doofuses with their homemade signs saying Bill Gates is controlled by Satan are like, take off that MAGA hat or they'll think we're nuts. <laughs> I do have to give them points for creativity, though. This clever gentleman <laughs> wrote, I don't know if you can see his sign here. When he holds it up, it says, swab my butthole, I dare you. You know, I know it's L.A., but there must be an easier way to meet people. It's... <laughs> I wish all these conspiracy theories could... It would just feed on each other. Like, oh, there are anti-vaxxers holding up the line at Dodger Stadium? Load up the Jewish space laser and blast away. <laughs> you know who did manage to score a dose of the vaccine? Do you know who got one? Okay, if you don't know, let's just imagine, who should be the last person in America to get one? I have one friend, a uh, golf buddy of mine, he got the Moderna shot uh, last week, and his shoulder was sore for a couple of days. Uh, another friend of mine, he got the Pfizer like I did, and uh, he was actually uh, nauseous and sick for a couple of days. Me, I've had no effects. I mean, I've had no ill effects. I'm just fine. Nothing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. But, no, I've had no ill effect whatsoever. Let's talk Super Bowl. Yeah, good one, OJ. <laughs> he really turns it around. Wow, what a terrible planet we're on. <laughs> For people over 65, it's still very difficult to get vaccinated. You know who should be distributing this vaccine? I thought of it. The people who invented fidget spinners. You remember those? <laughs> like, one day they didn't exist. The next day, every kid in America had 12 of them. Get them on this. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. According to the Census Bureau, 51% of Americans who haven't received the vaccine say they definitely want to get it, and nearly one in four Americans say they have no plans to get it ever, which is crazy, and maybe we should just be happy and take their shots ourselves, but the Biden administration is not giving up. They're teaming up with private enterprise to try to get this vaccine into every person in America. When it comes to the COVID vaccine, it's better latte than natte. Introducing the new Starbucks Vaxicino, blending the coffee you love with the cutting edge medicine you need to stay alive. One shot of espresso, two shots of Pfizer, three squirts of pumpkin spice, a load of Java chips, and a blast of Clorox bleach. Ask your barista if Starbucks Vaxicino is right for you. Side effects may include dizziness, nausea, diarrhea, explosive diarrhea, short-term memory loss, long-term hair loss, malaria, measles, and lumpy nuts. The new Starbucks Vaxicino. Quite frankly, that is nonsense. No, don't listen to him. He's, I don't know whose side he's on. You ever had lumpy nuts, Guillermo? No, no. Oh. <laughs> I pray that you never experience them. For the second year in a row, the Coachella Festival is canceled. When I heard it was canceled, I, my first thought was, oh, no, what did it tweet? But it's just because of the virus. Coachella is a big concert we have in the California desert. There was talk they might hold it virtually this year, but uh, turns out doing Molly in a uh, crown made of flowers isn't the same on Zoom. So <laughs> the pandemic has now entered the second wave of boredom. I think maybe we're out of TV shows or something, because the big new thing to watch is YouTube cleaning videos. Have you heard of this? Yeah, people are 
posting videos of themselves doing laundry, washing dishes, mopping, sweeping, and then other people watch them do it a lot. They have millions of views. Which do you think would be worse, catching your teenage son watching porn or catching him watch a stranger fold socks? <laughs> I would tell you, I'd love to see a video of Joe Biden trying to scrub the smell of Copper Tone and Burger King out of the White House right now. <laughs> President Biden has been working to undo many of his previous administration's terrible ideas. But one thing he's apparently hanging on to is the Space Force. Turns out the Space Force serves an important purpose, which is giving the Coast Guard someone to make fun of. <laughs> it is unclear what Biden will do with the Space Force, since it was mostly just Trump pointing at the moon and telling Mike Pence to go fetch. But whatever his plan is, the Space Force is here to stay. I get it. The last thing you want to be is the guy who shuts down the Space Force and then the next day aliens show up, right? <laughs> this is the kind of dumb stuff we have to look forward to over the next four years. These desperate conspiracy theorists. This one involves the decor in the Oval Office. This tweet says, Biden has already removed the bust of Churchill from the Oval Office and replaced it with a bust of Venezuelan socialist leader Chavez. Dark times lay ahead. Here's another. There are many. Hugo Chavez used Dominion voting machines to steal Venezuela elections. Is his bust in the Oval Office Biden's way of telling us, ha ha, F yes, I stole it? And this would be alarming, I guess, were it not for the fact that Joe Biden did not put a bust of Hugo Chavez in the Oval Office. He put a bust of Cesar Chavez in the Oval Office. <laughs> Cesar Chavez was an American civil rights leader and labor organizer, so he is a, a different person. Um, it happens. So you know why I always get confused? Ben and Aretha Franklin. Which one... Which one flew the kite? Anyway, meanwhile, over at Fox News, they don't know what to do. They have nothing to criticize yet, so they're focused on the idea that Joe Biden isn't reaching across the aisle as if he should be. Yesterday, Maria Baratiromo made, in making this case, what has to be the least self-aware statement of the year so far. You need to hear from the commander-in-chief to say, stop the hate, stop the nonsense, stop the blacklisting, and stop doing what you're doing to Trump allies. We'll see if he says it. <laughs> Does she hear herself? <laughs> Joe Biden needs to stop the hate. Who started the hate? <laughs> this is the new narrative, and a lot of it is coming from the Trump sycophants who are angry because they now can't find a job. President Biden has missed a historic opportunity to make good on this pledge to be a president for all Americans and to stand up and say the censorship must stop, the blacklisting must stop. We have to listen to and respect all viewpoints in America. But he has not done that. He has turned a blind eye to it. I think that's what I miss most about Trump is what a good listener he was, you know? <laughs> Thank you, slug who turned into a boy and then turned halfway back into a slug. <laughs> We're now only a week away from the impe impeachment trial number two for Donald Jennifer Trump. According to the New York Times, five of his lawyers quit over the weekend because he wanted them to go up there and make claims of voter fraud as a main part of his defense. He wanted his lawyers to make the case that he won the election and they quit. So this should be fun. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter what Trump's lawyers say, he's almost certain to be acquitted. Republicans in the Senate are in full lemming mode right now. Most are trying to dodge it by saying it's unconstitutional to impeach a president after he leaves office. But yesterday, two Republican senators said they will be fair jurors and they will listen to the evidence. Ohio Senator Rob Portman said he'll keep an open mind, and Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy, our old pal who pretended he supported health care, said this. I will wait to judge based upon the evidence presented. Wait a minute, it was on TV. He committed this crime on television. <laughs> what evidence are you waiting for them to present? This whole trial could take 45 seconds. Show the clip. Okay, who votes to impeach? Everyone? Okay, meeting adjourned. Let's get some vaccines going. <laughs> That the fear of, that these politicians have of these crazies is, this is amazing. This is from CNN. Anderson Cooper sat down with a former QAnon guy, which led to what's probably the most bizarre apology in the history of cable news. Jatarth Jadeja was a believer until June 2019. Did you at the time believe that Democrat, high-level Democrats and celebrities were worshiping Satan? drinking the blood of children. Anderson, I thought you did that. And I would like to apologize for 
that right now, so I apologize for thinking that you ate babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I know it's CNN, but how hilarious would it have been if right at that moment, Anderson Cooper slowly lifted a, a fried baby sandwich into frame and took a big bite of baby in front of him. Funny, right? Yeah. It was bachelor night tonight. Tonight, here on ABC, we witnessed the eagerly anticipated end to Queen Victoria's reign as bachelor Matt finally came to the realization that she is a monster. When you said that Ryan was a hoe for being a dancer, I don't think you know that how. That was completely taken out of context. Like, I'm just curious, like, what context would calling somebody hope be acceptable to be taken in? It is a really good question. <laughs> Guillermo, in what context is it acceptable to call somebody a hoe? Oh, never, never. Never, OK, all yeah. right. Well, this Victoria is really something. She might have been the most unpleasant contestant in Bachelor history. Queen Victoria is here. Hey. Excuse me, princess, but the queen is here. The queen is for sure getting a rose tonight. Thank you, my king. I think my team is a bunch of queens, and the other team is a bunch of gestures. <laughs> so as a true queen would say, let them eat cake. I'm not trying to fight either, but I, yeah, think, and like, I think that we can... we're like oil and vinegar. And I'm like, you're such a calculating little bitch. Who the f are these random ass hoes coming into the house? Catalina is the dumbest hoe I've ever met. Yeah. So you quarantined and then just stayed in your room as a backup, and now you're coming in as like a backup because some girls left? Like, I'm the only one with the working brain in this room. Katie's disgusting. We've known that for weeks now. She's been disgusting. I honestly feel so sorry for you that you would listen to hearsay and not all of the facts behind a situation. So, goodbye. He is not my king, and I am still a queen. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, I know they want people like this in the house to mix it up, but Victoria was too much. That was so much so that I have a theory. And here it is. Victoria was an instigator. She was constantly stirring the pot, she, being mean, pitting women against each other, and that's because Victoria was not really a contestant on the sh Victoria was secretly one of the producers of the show. <laughs> Think about it. And if I'm wrong about this, which I definitely am, the Bachelor people need to try it. I mean, how great would it be if there was a mole in the mix, right? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not proud of the fact that I watched The Bachelor at all. These, they behave like children. They're stubborn. They don't listen. They cry. They're selfish. They don't want to share. They're like children. They're like my children. And so we thought it would make sense to replace the voices of the bachelorettes with the voices of who they're behaving like, kids. This is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed to be here. You put my character in question with Matt. I am furious right now. You should be embarrassed. Are you done? Yes. You started term. JV versus varsity. Wow. In case you forgot, you also lied to him. This is just You dumb. lied. Stop talking over me, I Jesus never now. lied. Never lied. You don't know me. I don't la, know la, you. La, 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 la. I'm, not, I'm not listening. I am done and he will know the You're truth. You're a liar. Stop talking over me. He's going to know the truth tonight. Day. I Great. think I'm right. I guess we'll find out the truth tonight. We'll find out the truth when this all airs. And so will he. <laughs> That's cute. I'm done. That's just childish to say. Okay. <laughs> What's so funny, doo-doo head? We may have taken a little poetic license, but it's better, right? If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Oh, oh, oh.